Hey everyone, my name is Rue and we are here. This is going to be week 7 of our UBL matches and I do have to do a bit of apologizing and explaining. So first of all, sorry for not having this on time the way I should have, but also just a little bit of explanation for week 8. Uh, week 8 we did have a disconnection. It was neither of our faults. It was against Kurt, point blank, the Portage Herdiers. We were both still connected to Plaza and everything was fine on that end, but uh, we did get disconnected. It seems to be a Pokemon server issue, so that was unfortunate. But we could both agree to a 2-0 win for him. And just a bit of recap really quickly. Um, really early on, it seemed pretty clear that my Greninja could win on its own, and it was in a really solid position too. It was just uh, threatening so much damage each turn. It, it was a Life Warp Greninja with, with the Ice Beam for his Zapdos, uh, Gunk Shop for his Aromatis, and uh, Dark Poles for, for most of everything else. And it became pretty clear that he could tear through his team, but he kept playing these Switch games. He would switch into the Zapdos to avoid the Gunk Shot on the Aromatis. He would switch into the Aromatis to avoid the Ice Beam on the Zapdos, and, and all these other kind of Switch games that kind of made me concerned because I could see my HP bar going down due to Life Orb Recoil alone. He wasn't actually getting any hits in on the Greninja. And as I saw that Life Orb Recoil rack up, I kind of panicked, and I kind of felt like if I let myself get too low, that's pretty much giving him my Greninja to anything with priority. Even the Banette uh, Shadow Sneak could do it. If I let myself get low enough so I kind of panicked I switched out and in all honesty I made some pretty uh sloppy plays from there I don't really like how I played that sequence after switching out of the Greninja uh, I pretty much gave up my Meloetta for no reason and uh, I didn't do a really great job of playing around to his Scarf to Prime Me, which really did work against my team so much work and after all that even in the final final turns I did have maybe a chance to win if the Bennett didn't have the Destiny Bond, but in all fairness, I could have brought it down to an 0 win, I guess, if I had forced the Bennett to have the Destiny Bond on the final turn, but I didn't do that. Ultimately, I ended up giving him Micro Ninja, and from there, he just went on to win 2 0. So and that's that explanation we do take a week eight loss but this is our week seven on the screen right now it's going to be up against i'm not even gonna pretend to know how to pronounce that the nuzleafs coached by automatic but right off the bat the swello is super scary the kiram black is super scary i kind of did underestimate the mega scissor in all honesty but at this point i'm just kind of glad not to see the excel gore uh the mylotic the Reggie Rock, I was really glad not to see. Um, even the Nido King, Jesus. But the team in front of me is super, super scary. Obviously, uh, we have some Motor Drive, Volt Absorb uh, mind games to play, but I'm just gonna get into it. In all honesty, I can't remember what I led uh, at all uh, on either side, but I guess we're going to see. We This was a really, really fun match to play. Uh, there were so many mind games. Okay, so I just lead off with the Greninja here. I'm pretty positive that it's a Life Orb Greninja here, as he does lead with a Swellow. Now, I do bring, I do tend to bring Scarfed um, Greninja quite a bit, so I think he was fearing that. He switches right away, but I also switch out right away. And in, in all fairness, the, um, like, I bring the Scarfed Greninja so often, it makes total, total sense for him to do that. So I just go into the Ferrothorn straight away. I uh, probably just had to take a boom burst. I guess I had to check specs, but if it had heat wave, it would have destroyed me either way. He doubles out into the scissor. Now, at this moment, uh, I like I said, I did really underestimate the scissor here. I just go for the stealth rocks. Obviously, it's going to be a big help against the Kiram, as well as the Swallow, uh, in all fairness. But he just mega evolves straight away. And this is not a good situation for me to be in. Um, I believe this is the turn where he just goes for the Swords Dance. Yeah, he just sets, he just tries to set up, and he told me after the match, he was going to try to go for just plus four in this situation, try to uh, sweep my team. And in all fairness, my team is pretty weak to it. It's, it's not great if he gets plus four or beyond plus four, but I just go for the Thunder Wave. And at this point, it's pretty obvious that I have to switch out. I go out into Greninja, yes. Uh, and he actually gets fully paired, which is going to be huge. Now, in all honesty, uh, looking back on it, my Ferrothorn set was super passive, and it wasn't the match to bring that at all because of just how um, free it is for his Scizor to set up on it. And I did some count afterwards. Even in completely uninvested 
uh, HP fire from a Ferrothorn to a uh, to a Scizor would have done more than enough to at least deter her to go into plus four. So let's all pretend that that's what I did and, and that I played that correctly. But in any case, I got into this. I, I, and I can take a plus two bullet punt. It should be fine um, after that para, but he switched out into Sylveon and Life Orb Gunk Shot just destroys it right away. Now I'm in here and it, now the Electivire comes in here and in all honesty, I'm fearing the Scarf. I think it kind of bluffed Scarf. I don't know. We, I, I mean, you'll see. We talked about it later. I asked him, was he bluffing Scarf? And he said he was just clicking buttons at that point, um, which I don't quite know what that means. I, either way, I go out into, into the Ferrothorn. He calls a switch out as I um, have my Ferrothorn here, and he goes for the cross chop. And unfortunately, I wasn't able, even able to get any uh, Rocking Helmet Iron Bars damage onto the Scissor, but it's fine for now. I end up just going into the pre marina because at this point I'm assuming that it's scarfed and he misses the cross chop but it doesn't really matter too too much um and this is exactly what why I thought it was scarfed because he switches out right after the cross chop doesn't try to go for an electric move but either way I just go for the moon blast I know how much of a monster I think this might be specs pre marina once again but you can see just how much damage that does it's a specs as heck pre marina and it just does so so much damage and Specs Free Marina has been consistently two hitting walls like all season long, and it's been insane for me. I adore it so much. But in comes this Kieran Black, and at this point, I'm kind of fearing the. Um, if anything, I'm fearing Electrium Z off of Fusion Bolt. But I believe, yeah, I just switch out here. I think I give up. Yeah, I just end up giving up the Ferrothorn here. Uh, I believe I take this, maybe, possibly. I should. I honestly don't remember. And then, um, I believe I just go for the Thunder Wave as I let it take me out. But it does lose some Life Orb Recoil. Oh, it just goes for the Hidden Power. There you go. So I don't even get another turn of, um, Rocky Helmet or anything like that. So, what do I go into? I don't remember. Um, I mean, let's see. Okay, I go into the Tauros here, and I just try to get an Iron Head off. But I believe he calls that Iron Head and just switches on out. Let's see, he does go back into the Scizor, and this is pretty much a situation that I was prepared for. Iron Head doesn't do much, but it has to pull a punch me if it wants to get off any damage, or wants Swords Dance. I think he Swords Dance is expecting me to switch out, but I did have the Fire Blast, and that was pretty much an Oko no matter what. Um, it could have been slightly defensive, maybe max HP or something like that, but uh, it really wasn't too, too much to worry about. Then this thing comes in, and I would imagine I go for a Body Slam. No, I just switch out. Okay, that's that's a thing. I probably should have just gone for the Body Slam there, but I do go into my uh, Mellow Wedding here. Now, I wanted to stance change, not stance change, uh, change my form. And he goes for the U-turn, where a Boom Burst would have... I probably would have taken a Boom Burst... No, okay. I probably take them both equally as well. Or equally as badly, you could say. But uh, he goes for the U-turn on my Relic Song, and here I'm thinking, oh, I just gave up my Mellow Wetter for free once again, because this thing's probably Scarfed, and it's going to outspeed even a form-changed Mellow Wetter. And uh, it's, it, it's unfortunately, I'm, I'm not happy about how I play this Meloetta, but turns out it's not scarfed. <laughs> I don't, I still don't know um, what exactly, what kind of speed this was running, but uh, I was able to take it out. And then in comes the Kiram, and I can take out the Kiram any dang day of the week. And uh, this was designed this Meloetta to outspeed a Swello plus one, so I would have guaranteed outsped it unless it was scarfed, and uh, unfortunately, I end up taking myself out to my own recoil. I wanted Meloetta once again to get the final three KOs in a match, but it just didn't happen, and I was a little bit upset about that, but either way, Swello is still a threat. Um, I do end up going to my Jolteon. Now, my Jolteon does not outspeed the Swallow because my Jolteon is uh, Quick Feet for some reason. Oh, for the Excel Gore. The Excel Gore is the reason that I brought Quick Feet Jolteon. And uh, we can see we take the Boom Burst reasonably well. It's fine. But I was really scared. Like, if this Boom Burst takes me out, then I could be in some trouble. But 
it's ultimately fine. We take the boom burst fine and take it out. And that is a 4-0 win for the Robats in week seven. So we did get a little bit ahead on week seven. And then we did lose week eight, like I said before. So we're gonna try to come back uh, only a few weeks left in the season, but we have to do well. We're in a solid, solid position to get that third seed in our division. It's just a matter of playing well to, for the rest of the season. But either way, it was a lot of fun. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back with more UBL matches, more PGL matches. We are in a very, very decent spot for playoffs. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be once again out.